Top Gear is a British thing, but we make this site for the world. So here's some global perspective. Among all the VW Group electric family, projected to shift millions of units, the ID.4 will be the worldwide pinnacle seller. By mid-2022 it'll be flowing off the lines in two German factories, two in China and one in the US. It'd better be good then. To absolutely no one's surprise, the ID.4 is the crossover sibling of the ID.3 hatch. What that means is a designed for electric platform known as MEB. Mostly then, it's rear-wheel drive. But now you can spec a dual-motor, four-wheel drive performance version called the ID.4 GTX. A GTI or R for the electric age. We'll see about that. Mind you, the fact of rear drive for the masses doesn't mean it's aiming at avid drivers. We trust you'll allow us to puncture the suspense, this is a family crossover and feels like it. We've tested a number of ID.4s now, including an early first edition, a GTX and a mainstream ID.4 Pro performance. The latter sounds racy, but it's merely code for big battery and a 201 brake horsepower rear E motor. The cells comprise a battery of 77 kilowatt hours, net, i.e. the usable portion. This gets you a 308 mile WLTP range in top spec max trim or slightly more in the lesser life trim thanks to smaller wheels. To demonstrate the draggy effects of the ID.4's added bigness, that's around 30 miles less than an ID.3 with the same pack and motor. If you can make do with the 52 kilowatt hours ID.4, then range is claimed at between 211 and 213 miles WLTP. To give you an idea of size, think Tiguan outside but bigger inside. The wheelbase is actually the same as an ID.3, but sitting more upright means a sense of more legroom. Overall it's about 30 centimeters longer than the ID.3, so the boot's a lot bigger. The cabin cleaves to the minimalist aesthetic of many EVs, although that's not necessarily a good thing. The ID.4 adopts the all-touch interface of the ID.3. That feels a bit underbaked to us, but VW promises over-the-air software updates every two months. That said, the ID.4 has now been out long enough that the software really ought to be perfect by now, but it's not even close. Meanwhile the touch slidey steering wheel buttons and main dash controls aren't getting any less infuriating. It's a matter of context. We found ourselves a bit disappointed by the ID.3. It was hyped as a reinvention of the Golf for the new age. But it doesn't quite satisfy its driver like a well-honed hatch should. Whereas the ID.4 plays against crossovers, and no one buys a crossover for the driving. Do they? Crossovers are family transit pods. And judged through that lens, the ID.4 is right on target. Not in the same league of cool as the Hyundai Ioniq 5, though. It does at least have a roomy cabin, loads of clever storage spaces, good electric range for the price, and a smooth, silent driving experience that demands nothing of you. But the interior is fiendishly unintuitive to operate, and that alone would be enough to have us considering the likes of the Ioniq 5, the Kia EV6 and the VW's enemies within, in the shape of the Audi Q4 e-tron and Skoda Enyaq, which run exactly the same platform underneath. It's over 2 tons with a big battery option, so the 201 brake horsepower of the Pro Performance isn't going to warp the horizon. The 0 to 62 figure, 8.5 seconds, makes it sound like a better overtaker than it is. We timed an ID.4 using a GPS tracker and found it actually did the 0 to 60 sprint in 7.9 seconds, which is healthy, but what constitutes in-gear punch is still on the leisurely side. That doesn't matter most of the time, as like any EV it picks up the instant you ask, and the delivery is super controllable. In urban driving you notice the well-calibrated pedal too, as it moves you away from rest with creamy smoothness rather than a jolt. Ah, hate to disappoint, but it really doesn't. The extra motor up front boosts power to a significant 295 brake horsepower and drops the 0 to 62 miles per hour time to 6.2 seconds, but because of the electric drivetrain and a hefty focus on safety it just doesn't feel any different to the standard car. Slightly more alert, yes, but there's no drama or sense of fun, and even through twisty stuff the steering is light and uncommunicative. There is a 4WD traction mode that'll help if you ever need to escape a slippery field, but most of the time you'd be better off with the extra range of the Pro Performance. 
the GTX claims between 289 and 300 miles WLTP. VW doesn't expect you to geek out on the whole electric driving thing. So it doesn't give you complicated energy consumption readouts or a driver-only climate mode. Not even paddles to select different levels of regeneration or adaptive radar-based variable Regen either. Just E and B on the main drive thumb lever thingy. And even B for brake mode doesn't pull you back very strongly. That's because the best way to hypermile any EV is to anticipate and lift early, rather than rely on regenerative braking. But when you use the brake pedal, which is nicely progressive, it does get you a bit more regen at the top of the travel. Not that much though, as this is RWD and dragging the back wheels on a slippery road too much would be like using only the back brake on your push bike, liable to unsettle matters. You certainly won't unsettle an ID.4 in corners, deliberately or otherwise. Into slow ones it'll understeer mildly but doggedly. Settle it and use the power to the rear and it'll go through neutrally. The standard car actually feels more AWD than RWD, another mark against the GTX, strangely, there's loads of traction and precious little steering feel except in quicker bends.